Hi, this is Pioneer Field Agronomist Marty Lovern in central Minnesota. Armyworm are rarely an issue for us in this area, but occasionally we'll see small grain, maybe a rye cover crop, sometimes a grassy area or grassy field of corn, and rarely maybe the uh, soybean field that gets infested uh, uh, on occasion as well. Armyworm don't overwinter here in Minnesota, rather the adult or the moth uh, gets picked up in the Gulf Coast states and really pushed northward on storm systems. As the storms cross our area, the moth, uh, the moths literally drop out into our fields and begin looking for preferred egg laying sites, uh, which would be grassy areas. So if you've got a grassy area of a field because uh, it was consistently raining uh, right after planting and you were not able to get in to put on a pre-merge herbicide, field gets grassy, that's going to be ideal uh, site where armyworm uh, egg laying is likely to take place and we could see some issues as the plants continue to develop. When the eggs hatch, they begin feeding and they'll go through six larval stages or caterpillar stages. Uh, the largest, the sixth stage, will be um, where most of the feeding takes place. And uh, the armyworm caterpillar at that point is one and a quarter to maybe one and three quarters of an inch long, has a voracious appetite, and uh, will stay in that stage for about 10 days doing much of the destruction that we see in a field that's been hit by armyworm. The, uh, the best time to look for armyworm is in the, in the late evening, but uh, when you're looking during the day, you'll see the damage. You might not see a lot of armyworm. You might be able to look down the whirl of a corn plant and see them hiding inside that whirl. Initial feeding by, uh, by younger armyworm uh, would be really um, kind of this marginal feeding on the edge of leaves like we, uh, like we see here, just kind of little marginal feeding on, on the uh, perimeter of the leaf. As the army worm get larger, they become more aggressive in their feeding and more destruction takes place. The treatment threshold for army worm would be uh, on corn plants. When you've got two army worm per plant on an average of about 25% of those plants, time to pull the trigger and treat. If it's 75% uh, of the plants with one army worm, uh, on average or more per plant. We should pull the trigger there as well. What we're trying to do is protect the ear leaf on up on developing corn plants to protect the yield potential of that, uh, of that plant. On soybeans, the, uh, the treatment threshold on, on uh, reproductive stage soybeans would be 20% leaf destruction, pull the trigger then. And uh, on small grains, Typically it's four to five army worm per square foot on the, on the area on the soil. Easy to control army worm um, with insecticides. So if you do have uh, treatable levels, do it, make that decision quickly. A lot of damage can happen just overnight. And so um, you can control army worms very readily with synthetic pyrethroids like Mustang Max or Warrior II. And uh, also um, uh, organophosphates such as Lorsban uh, does an excellent job as well. So really the key is not uh, not being able to control them. We can control them very easily with insecticides. It's knowing whether you have the issue or not. So I encourage you to look at your fields where you have a grass escape issue, um, field margins that might adjoin a small grain field that would be infested, um, ditches, along ditches, field edges, waterways, um, that type of thing. Where you've got uh, some grasses involved, you're likely to see some army worm in years where they do migrate up. Good luck controlling them. Pretty easy to take out. Uh, you just need to know that they're there. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.